has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. I got to tell you, before we do anything, uh, funniest thing I've seen. So all we heard about was crying that uh, they had to hire Antonio Pierce. Max Crosby was going to retire. All the players were going to go on strike. They wanted him to be the coach. And then, oh, my God, the world's going to end if they don't give AP the job. And then they give him the job. And then five minutes later, I'm watching media reports saying, analyzing whether or not it was a good decision to give Antonio Pierce the job. Oh, my God, you can't win in this world anymore. You give the job to, to the guy everybody wanted, and now you don't want him to have the job because, what, you're some media dude that thinks he knows better? Go have a sandwich, fat ass. It's time for the Maxwell Minute with Rich Sermonello. Hey, Scotty. Uh, Nick Saban sneezed last week, and the coaching ranks in college football caught influenza. It's uh, remarkable how many campuses are now being affected by the decision. I'm not sure how you felt. We haven't talked since that decision by Saban, but I was shocked. I, I thought we had more time to watch the greatest of all time coaching on the sidelines at Alabama, but that is not the case. And now we're seeing the ripple effect. First off, a positive one for us at the Maxwell Football Club. Uh, right around the time that Saban announced he was retiring, Kalen DeBoer was named our National Coach of the Year after leading Washington to a, Washington to a Pac-12 title and an appearance in the National Championship game at the time. We thought we were getting the Washington football coach, which would have been great. Uh, but in Atlanta, in early March at the College Football Hall of Fame, we'll actually be hosting the Alabama uh, head football coach. So great news for the Maxwell Football Club. In terms of DeBoer, listen, I think it's a good hire. Uh, you know, you, you didn't get Dan Lanning. Uh, he decided to stay at Oregon. You didn't get uh, Sark. He's going to stay at Texas. Uh, maybe Mike Norvell at Florida State was in the mix. I think this is as good as Alabama can do. And Kalen DeBoer is obviously a great football coach. He's proven that at every level. Last two years at Washington, leading a program that was 4-8 and eight in 2021 to back-to-back -to -back top 10 finishes. So great coach. But my biggest concern is not that he doesn't have a footprint in the South. Not, it's not going to be recruiting. It's not going to be the SEC competition. I, I think, Scott, this is all about expectations. I, I mean, you're replacing Nick Saban. The bar is set at national championships. And the first time that Kalen DeBoer has, you know, a 9-3, and 10-2 and two season, God forbid he misses the expanded college football playoff, I think it's going to be something that he has never dealt with before. Now, quickly, love the hire of Jed Fish at Washington. I mean, Jed Fish did a great job in Tucson. Uh, some interesting correlations. He's a Jersey guy like you and I. He's an Essex County guy like I am. And I think you'd find this interesting. Never played football at any level. Was an all-state tennis player. And, and I think you're going to love this story, Scott. Uh, just like you uh, with Coach Knight in Bloomington, Jed Fish went to Florida just to be surrounded by Steve Spurrier. And that has worked out really well. So I, I like the way Washington has rebounded with Jed Fish. Did a great job in Tucson. And in terms of Arizona, we'll see how this plays out. I think they're going to be okay. But I think they have to think big in terms of replacing Fish. Go out and get Jamie Chadwell. Put Coastal Carolina on the map. Liberty, he took to a, a New Year's Six Bowl game. So Jamie Chadwell is out there. Let's bring him to the Big 12 in 2024. I think that's a great idea for Arizona. And I'll tell you what, Fish has got his work cut out for him in, in Washington, right? I mean, they lost their quarterback and they lost everybody else too on that team. And now they're going to the Big 10 kind of with their pants down, honestly. So I don't think it's going to be easy. The job he's got cut out for him. And I wanted to go back to one thing I said to you, uh, Carver High, and we welcome our radio affiliate, Sirius XM Channel 159 and Sports Byline, their affiliates. And uh, that's the, the Mahomes thing. Uh, people can think whatever they want about, you know, hit the quarterback, rough him up, 
pain. That's the answer for me. And I'll tell you what, when he lost the Super Bowl to Tampa, what happened to him? He ran for his life the entire night, and they roughed him up. There is only one way to win, and that is to eliminate your problem. Your problem is uh, Patrick Mahomes in Buffalo on Sunday. You want to win the game? Make him run for his life, and then even when he throws it, knock him on his ass, even if it costs you 15 yards a couple times. They need to let him know who's boss. Uh, and one more thing, and this kind of correlates to what you're saying right now. When you talk about hitting the quarterback and getting pressure on the quarterback, uh, the Bills gave Von Miller a lot of money, Scotty. Um, and as we know, he got hurt last year. Uh, now he came back this year. He's done nothing. He's got. He's actually had more uh, publicity off the field uh, this yeah. year than he's had. He's done on nothing. It. He's done nothing this year. He's making tons of money. Can this guy make a big play on Sunday? Like, can he like, can he like, out of nowhere, like maybe turn back the clock a little bit, uh, and and maybe go and get a couple pressures on Mahomes, maybe even a sack, God forbid, maybe even a, a fumble, you know, something like that. Can this guy show up uh, and make a big play? That Epinesa is Sunday? the guy making plays for you these days. Certainly not Von I know, Miller. I know Russo and Epinesa. Those guys are probably going to be the guys that go in there and make the big plays. But God, I mean. At least, I mean, tr they won't mind all the money you stole from if you actually uh, help them get he the, ripped them off. this team. Uh, this he team, looks finished. Sure. He uh, looks he finished. Look finished. He does. Um, Ohio State uh, hired Bill O'Brien as offensive coordinator. I was just going to tie that in because obviously Rich was talking about the college football as well. Uh, so he le he goes back to college. He was with Alabama for two years. Was so with expect, last year. Yeah. Expect their offense to go backwards, just like every other Correct. thing he touches. He is not. Uh, I am done listening to Bill O'Brien's a great coach. Those days are yeah. long gone, and he's done nothing except fail the last few years. I don't want to hear it. Ryan Day, in my view, honestly, I think it's a mistake. Uh, I don't like it either. Uh, Bill O'Brien is, uh, what do we like to say, Scott? He's stale bread, uh, Bill O'Brien. Yeah, he's stale, stale bread. bread. Been around for a long time. Uh, a couple other things in these games, and then we'll move on to all the stuff tonight, like the NBA first. The public wagers here, Still a day to go, of course, but this is 60% or more of the wagers at BetMGM. 67% are on the Texans at the 9.5, 63% on the Lions minus the 6.5. So not a lot of 60% uh, or more up there on the board for the total. 70% on the over in Detroit, Tampa. 68% on the over in San Francisco, Green Bay. 67% on the over in Baltimore, Houston in terms of totals. Well, I mean, that that's crazy. So I, I, I don't even want to think about what everybody's doing because uh, it screws with my head. I don't, I, you know, I know. Well, that's what I do. You know what I mean? I, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to give you all these numbers. We screw already with my head. Bets. I give you everybody. This guy's ATS in his career. This guy, the last 10 games, oh, public yeah. bets, all this stuff. I well, like to give what you, you all told that me, Friday. you told me, what you <laughs> told me today was that Lamar Jackson never wins. And that never uh, Patrick yeah, Mahomes never, never loses, ever. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> those are the things that we have told you. Uh, we'll come back. I, I got to give you the tutties uh, for this weekend. Before uh, that's all we that matters. On. I mean, everybody needs the touchdown plays. Uh, I got one from each game. I think one game I even that's gave it. you a bonus ball. So we'll do that. Get your pen and paper game. out. This is all that matters in life. <laughs> Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairley Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid.
they were best friends. Like they, they, like Siakam's best friend on the team was Chris Boucher. Chris Boucher's best friend on the team was Pascal Siakam. They're not American, right? So like they, like they're, there's different cliques in the NBA. And they were very, very tight. So Chris Boucher, I got rattled like seeing Chris Boucher and thinking about the memories, but Raptors responded. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. One that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. I'm getting ready for a big game 58 bet five dollars get 158 instantly it's unbelievable download the bet mgm sportsbook app on ios or android or visit betmgm.com sign up deposit five into your new account place a wager of at least five bucks at standard odds once you placed your bet for five you're going to get 158 in bonus bets instantaneously regardless of the outcome of your wager it's the greatest thing i've ever seen in my life please use the bonus code sg158 periodically on this show will slip in a having a bad day story before the Pharrell finish. The Pharrell finish is usually where we find these types of stories, but some days you have to slip in a having a bad day. And I would say Alec Baldwin is having a bad day because he was indicted today for manslaughter in the fatal Rust movie shooting of the fake gun that was apparently loaded with a bullet months after they dropped the charges. They're now going to try to put him in prison for murder. Wait wait a second here. Now, isn't now refresh my memory. Isn't this the situation where uh, this was obviously they were filming a movie. This was supposed to be a prop, a prop in the that they handed him uh, to use in the film that somebody, some moron loaded. Wasn't that the the situation? And then he fires uh, the the weapon, thinking that they're shooting a movie. Hence, uh, fires a real bullet. And I, I'm just maybe there's more to this than I know, and and I haven't dug deep enough into it. How is that his? Uh, how, how is that his fault? He's, he's at the, the movie. end of that? the day, this falls under the jurisdiction of. Alec Baldwin is having a bad day. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> I'd say that's having a bad day. I mean, he didn't. Uh, whatever. Like I said, I he don't know is what having a bad day. <laughs> he has been indicted today for manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter. He didn't mean to do it, but he did it, and they're blaming him. And that is having a bad day on coast to coast. Wow, uh, there's a lot of people having a bad day lately. All right, give me your like. tutties. Uh, how about the tutty time tips, for, this. Uh, for this weekend before we get to tonight's uh, and last night's NBA? Here's what we got. I got one for each game with you, and I'll go a double pack uh, for the last one. No Mark Andrews for the Ravens. That's good Boom. for me, Scott. You want to know why? Because we want Isaiah Likely at plus 180 for the Ravens on Saturday. Jaden Reed wasn't very involved last week in that Cowboy thrashing. I think he does get involved. This week against the Niners, plus 200 for Jaden Reed and the Packers. Sunday, Mike Evans. I, here's one thing I've seen about the Lions. You can throw on them. You're going to be able to throw the football. So let's get Mike Evans uh, and his toes, Scotty, from the Intercontinental Elevator uh, in at even money, plus a hundy uh, for him. And then in the Bill Chief game, I saw the note today that Kelsey hasn't scored in seven straight games. 
The Bills have all these kinds of problems with injuries and linebackers. I'm sure Kelsey will score at plus 125. But Dalton Kincaid at plus 250. You're giving me that price for the big fella who's been finding the end zone all over the place? Let's go here. Plus 250 for Kincaid. Give me the Tupac Shakir in there also, Scotty. Uh, I will replace Travis Kelsey with Knox and Tupac Shakir. I am not having it. It'll be eight straight, and it's because he fell in love with Skinny Twig. Ever since he fell in love with Skinny Twig, he is no longer an NFL player that matters. Uh, And Dawson Knox has scored the first touchdown in four of the last six Bills playoff games. That is 25 to 1 if you want to bet it again. Five of six. Uh, for this week. Four of the four of the last six. So uh, keep that five in mind of for this weekend. Let's go. Uh, let's make it happen at 25 to 1. Why not? Uh, NBA for you. A couple things from last night first. The Bulls beat the Raptors 116 to 110. The Bulls were actually uh, destroying the Raptors, guys. Raptors came back in this game, got it close in the fourth quarter, took the lead at one point, but Kobe White. At the end, the dagger on TNT. White takes a peek. Trent's on him. Gets by him. White flying to the basket. Lays it in. And a six-point Bulls lead. The Raptors elect not to foul. There you go. Cody lighting it up. Uh, how about the Knicks last night? It went from 12 and a half to 11 and a half. Everybody pounced on it when they saw it move, and they still couldn't cover. They could not cover 113 to 109. Ended up being really a close game the entire night. Uh, Jalen Brunson, though, Scotty, putting it away for the Knicks in the fourth quarter on MSG. Kulabali reverse blocked by DiVincenzo. Here comes Brunson the other way. Great hustle from Dante DiVincenzo. Brunson inside, layup, count it, and one. Chance for a three point play. 41 for Brunson Burner. My man is just unstoppable. Certainly is. Uh, Thunder and the Jazz, they got up and over that total for us. 134 to 129 was the final in Salt Lake. The T-Wolves beat the Grizzlies 118 to 103. Anthony Edwards, Scotty, only two points in the first half, but then followed that up by scoring 26 in the second half on TNT. 27th double-double of the year. That is good for fifth host in the NBA. Edwards trying it again. Flight five was cleared. Anthony Edwards, two at halftime, 23 in the second half. I think that's Kevin Harlan with the Sportscaster of the Year Award. He got that award already in 23, and there he is with the call of the ant throwdown. Uh, nice job. We always love uh, when we get to hear Kevin Harlan uh, on Coast to Coast. Uh, always a legendary I was an intern indeed. for him in Kansas City. Yes, way back in the he, day. Uh, he used and- to tell me to go to get his lunch at Wendy's and hurry up. And the Pacers uh, beat the Kings outright, Scotty. Uh, Pacers were eight and a half point dogs in Sacramento last night. They won the game 126 to 121. So, as you always say, uh, the team that's missing all their players, uh, just bet on them. You might as well just bet on the team that's so, missing so their entire on, team. So, this <laughs> next game is a perfect example of it. Wemby's not playing. I bet on Charlotte laying four and a half, and you know I'm going to lose. Spurs will win the game outright with no Wemby. It's automatic. Every time the star player's out, everyone bets the other way, they all lose. Every time, 100%. Probably probably the case. It is still four and a half right now. 235 and a half is the total. No Wemby for the Spurs tonight. The Sixers are in Orlando against the Magic. Uh, Sixers minus five and a half. 222 and a half is the total. Yeah, I like Bancaro and the Magic tonight with Mickey Mouse and company in the Big O. Let's go. Oh, we love to hear that uh, in the Big O with them. Uh, Let's go next uh, to the uh, big one, Scotty, in Boston. The Celtics, 20 and 0 at home so far this year. The defending champs are coming to town tonight, though. Nuggets getting seven and a half here, 233 and a half is the total uh looks like gordon's gonna be good to go for the nuggets he's probable uh porzingis is good for the celtics white is good for the celtics looks like we're getting a full uh complement of both teams yeah i think denver shot on the road i think boston whacks them by a dozen 
or wow, more. Wow, Boston taking them to the woodshed tonight. How about that? Atlanta in Miami against the Heat. Heat minus six and a half, 221 and a half is the total. Yeah, no I think it's too many, too many, oh, no ice tray. Oh, well no then obviously tray. I'm on the Hawks and the, and the points. No ice tray, any other bad news? Give me the Hawks and the points. Yeah, I've got here on the report, uh, Trey Young illness out uh, tonight, Scotty, for the No win. So, no cover. Yeah, yep, yep, there you go. Uh, we'll come back, and I'll give you the rest of them. Actually, no, you go Gabe next, and then after Gabe, I'll give you the last couple of games, and then I'll give you tonight's hockey. I'll give you tonight's college basketball as well. Uh, so we have plenty more to do uh, here on Coast to Coast. Listen, I got back-to-back nights hitting plus 180s in the NHL. I'm like horny, baby. And how about that? Uh, I had a plus a buck, too, with that over in the Boston game with the pasta goal with 20 seconds oh. left for the Hattie. I mean, I'm hitting oh, hockey oh, games left and right over here, Carver High. <laughs> I mean, it is just left and right. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. best friends like they they like siak was best friend on the team with chris boucher chris boucher's best friend on the team was pascal siakam they're not american right so like they like they're there's different cliques in the nba and they were very very tight so chris boucher i got rattled like seeing chris boucher and thinking about the memories but raptors responded sports rage late night only on sports grid one that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
Well, as you know, uh, we are not nice on this show, and there are no feelings. And I am friends with Kaplan. I'm, I love Adam. I've been do doing shows with him forever, and I will continue to make fun of him. And there's nothing any of you can do about it because I'm 6'4", 240, and I'll beat your ass. Here's the deal. Earlier today, Marenzi, this guy said on this show, he goes, give me the Chiefs outright. They're going to win, and I'm still rooting for Carver High. You cannot bet on the Chiefs and then root for your buddy on the side like you got some kind of side piece. I was like, what a Femi thing. You either are all in and you want to, like, when the Steelers played the Bills, I wanted to stab Morenci and Carver High in the chest <laughs> with spot off shotguns and butcher knives. Then I made a bet with them both. I said, if I lose, I will knob the Bills all the way to the Super Bowl. I am betting on the Bills laying two and a half. Then they tell me today, they're – Dr. Chow, the entire team is injured. They're crippled. They have no chance. Every player's out. I'm still betting on the Bills. And then I topped it off, Marenzi. I don't know if you heard me. By saying, I hope someone pile drives Mahomes' head into the ground and knocks his head off and that they chase him all day and make him a cripple. I am not nice. You want nice? Go to church. I am kill the quarterback. That's how the Bears used to do it in 85. Put the fear of God in him. When he lost the Super Bowl, he was running for his life. That's how the Bills win. Rough his ass up. I like your style, uh, Scott, and I'm all in as well. You know, you push the boundaries, but Kansas City, you know, Kansas City have taken what you wanted, and they're going to continue to take what you want over and over unless you take it from them. And we all know the Buffalo Bills are an injured football team, but I find it interesting, Scott. Nobody's talking about all the Kansas City Chief uh, injuries. They don't really have anybody to throw the football to to begin with, and they're extremely light. It's basically Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice uh, right now. I think the Bills got, listen, Rasul Douglas is going to play. That was the key thing. Looks like Taron Johnson is good to go. Spectre, whatever. Spectre is like a kid backup that was playing well. To me, the rap injury, the 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 the, um, the Bills safety, Tyler Rap. This is a big one because they we you know you and I talked about this, Scott. The Bills are a little bit vulnerable over the middle of the football field, but what Josh Allen there? will not be denied. Josh is not going to be denied. This is the end of the road for the Kansas City Chiefs season. We'll see. It was the end of the road for Travis Kelsey uh, himself. Maybe he'll be the Kelsey that retires when it's all said and done. I you know I just get the feeling that the Bills. The Bills are on such a mission right now, and it just is next man up. The defensive line has been awesome. You've talked a lot about Espinosa. We can talk about Greg Russo out of uh, out of Miami. He's been awesome recently as well over the last month uh, or so. The defensive line is making up for the injuries in the secondary at the linebacker position. Buffalo will win this football game. They're going to win this game like 30-23, to 30-24, to 24, something like that. Did you see the overtime uh, prop is like 770? They, they've played overtime before. Uh, do you think it could happen again and it could be another epic game? Now, look, they've, these two teams have had epic games. Why not another one? Why not throw a piece down on overtime and you'd be seven and a half to one? And we have to be honest, too. The Bills are lucky, Scott, that Kadarius Tony's a dumbass and lined up two feet offside right on that play because they actually would have lost uh, last time that they played, I really I don't know I don't know I'm pretty good with this, Scott. Every once in a while, I just sort of I you know I let it come to me, right? I sort of think about these games all week, and it just sort of it's like yeah, that's that's actually what's going to happen at the end. And I've sort of had this vision: the Bills are up, Mahomes has you know the Chiefs are behind, but the Bills stop them. But it's not like a field goal type of thing. Like I said, I keep coming back to like 30-24, 30-23. Right. I really think it's just going to be a perfect world here. Listen, the Kansas City Chief offense is kind of – they don't really bring much to the table, Scott, to be honest. Like how many points did they really score, right? So they're going to get into the 20s, all right? They'll get into the low 20s, I think. To me, this is Josh Allen's game, Scott, at some point. Right. You know, all the numbers are great, and man, what a run, and this – at some point, you need to break through. And he reminds me of John Elway a lot, bro. You and I are old enough to remember, man. People call John Elway a loser, right? He couldn't win the big game. Oh, he's just athletic. He turns the ball over. Yeah, and then he won two big games in a row, and he dropped the mic, and he walked away. 
and we remember yeah. him as one of the greatest ever. I remember when people said Steve Eiserman wasn't a leader, and he's not a team player and not Jesus, a winner. Jesus, how many cups did he win? Oh, my yes, God. Hey, by the way. By Phil the way, Mickelson, Marantz, Scott. Phil Mickelson, big choker, can't win the big one. Yeah, he won a few big ones. I feel like Josh Allen's, like, next in line to break through, man. Yeah, listen, first of all, golfers can't go into conversations about hockey players or NFL players. Uh, golfers are drunks and fat and have gambling problems <laughs> like us. All right, so I have a movie ending for you, too. I had a dream. I just want to tell you what my dream is really quick. So I had a dream that the Bills were up 30 to 23 and Mahomes had the ball last. And <laughs> a lot like last week when he got his helmet cracked, this week in my dream he had his helmet knocked off his head not only were they not able to find a new helmet to fit his head but they found his head inside his helmet at the other end of the field when they knocked his head off of his neck that's what i want to see i want to see the bills decapitate him in my dream and i woke up and i felt great i don't even know it wasn't even a nightmare it was just like a, a loving dream of watching him get buried just like he did in that Super Bowl. I'm sick and tired of hearing about him. I'm sick and tired of hearing about that skinny twig singer. I'm sick and tired of Travis Kelsey. I'm sick and tired of their fat ass coach. I'm sick and tired of all of it. You and I will be doing the Tampa Bay Lions game. Do you think the Lions can bury the Buccaneers or is this one gonna be close? I think this one's going to be close. And I get Whoa. the feeling that the Detroit Lions survive in advance like they did against the Los Angeles Rams. Listen, man, they were only laying three points in that game when they managed not to cover. They won by one. You watched the game. We all watched the game. They were lucky to win that game. The Rams lucky. actually did a hell of a lot more than they did, okay? The Rams just, there was, you know, I don't know how they didn't. Like, it's one of those, how did we not win that game? Like, if you're right. the Rams. Like, dude, we did everything. We ran the ball. We threw the ball. We stopped them. How did we lose? Well, McVay, I don't know. It wasn't McVay's best night. We'll tell you. You know, we'll put it that way. Um Dude, you know, I was just looking at a number, Scott, and I heard you and Carver talking earlier about numbers, this and that, and I know I could really spin your head if you want. I could throw a lot oh, of crazy no, stuff at you right now. don't do it to me. I got health problems. Don't do it to me. <laughs> How about this? Um, <laughs> teams go. that win. Gonna teams, teams anyway. that, I'm going to throw one out here, Scott. Just so you're going to like this. Teams that win as an underdog in a wild card weekend are 13 and 50 the following week. So that's Houston and Green Bay. Houston, oh, they're 13 and 50? Yeah, straight up. Like, so you know what I mean? Like, uh, we always see these teams, oh, they look uh, good, right? And then the next week, it's like, no, they don't win. They're 13 <laughs> wins, 50 losses. But oh, they're 25 yeah. and 38 against the spread. This is where I'm going to twist That's your head, just though, Scott. bad. 25 and 38 against the spread. So, but That's I'm going to twist your bad. head on this one. How about this? So, the Baltimore Ravens, they lost, right, their last um, game of the year. Right against Pittsburgh, they lost the right. last game of the year. Right, teams that on the bye week that lose their last regular season game of the year are one and eight against the spread. The last nine times it's happened, that's the Baltimore so, Ravens role. So, so then, so then, like, so are you betting on the Texans with that fat nine I am. and a half? I am. I think I don't think Baltimore are all that, bro. I think Baltimore are really good, but I don't. Scott, let me put it this way. I don't think anybody deserves to be 10-point favorites against anybody in this league. Like, to me, Baltimore, you might win. You've won one playoff game with Lamar Jackson. All right, you'll probably win, but I'm not running to say, oh, yeah, they're going to win by 10 for sure. Yeah. CJ Stroud's got ice in his veins, bro. Like, Nico Collins is making plays. D'Amico Ryan's a really smart coach. He was the defensive coordinator of the Niners. I, I he was a start linebacker. I, I like, agree they're gonna you. They're going to play with him, Scott. I think this game's like... 27 23 you know i mean a close game it's a battle i think so uh, in the green bay game after you just said that all these uh dogs that win that go the next week and as hot as love is hottest quarterback in the nfl right now is love it sure ain't brock montana can the packers cover the nine and a half piece in santa clara i like the texans i like the bills i like the bucks we just talked about the bucks are really good against the spread We'll be doing the game live. Check us out, everybody, me and Scott. But this is the one where I'm starting to get a little bit worried about. I'm just thinking, oh, man, oh, San Francisco, oh, that offense, oh, bro. I love the over the game, Scott. Because, dude, uh, you got McCaffrey. You've got Ayu. Uh, you've got uh, Debo uh, Samuel. You've got Kittle. Uh, it's an onslaught. Can Green uh, And I don't think Green Bay's defense is great. Look, dude, know, 
They gave up 32 points to the Cowboys last week. They gave up 30 points to the Panthers when you and I watched them. So don't tell me San Francisco ain't getting into the 30s. So can Jordan Love trade points with him all night? I don't know if he can keep up all night, but I think he can go over the number. I'm leaning with the Packers plus the points, but it's like the Flintstones. Uh, Gazoo is telling me, don't do it, dumb dumb. <laughs> but this guy, how about this guy? I was in, I woke up in a good mood. I had a nice day. We're getting tons of snow here. I have no problems. Well, then I'm I sick sit of down snow. and Renzi comes in the room. Now I got an upset stomach. I got a migraine. Hey, head my head is spinning. I got Kazoo's right behind me sticking a <laughs> knife in my back. And then I got to watch uh, Sunday night, the Chiefs against the Bills. But we'll be on three, two, six. 30 on Sunday in game live all access for Tampa and the Lions. I refused to do the Bills game with Morency because he already <laughs> tortured me once this week. I said, not twice. So they said, put his wussy ass on the Buccaneers game. Tomorrow I'm on four to eight. I'm doing the Ravens Texans game with the mayor of Miami, Joe Ranieri. So check that out. All right, uh, Gabe, enjoy the games tonight. Tomorrow I'll see you Sunday. Three sharp Look forward to it. on in game live, my man. Let's get it done. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. best friends like they they like siakam's best friend on the team was chris boucher chris boucher's best friend on the team was pascal siakam they're not american right so like they like they're there's different clicks in the nba and they were very very tight so chris boucher i got rattled like seeing chris boucher and thinking about the memories but raptors responded sports rage late night only on sports grid one that's been to a sporting event the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid.
I mean, Carver has already told me that if the Bills don't win on Sunday night, he's not coming to work Monday. He'll have literally like it's Bills Mafia pneumonia. It's like a after game well, sickness. It it comes on fast. It's like I was uh I was telling Joe last night, is Joe asked like something similar to that, and I said, here's one thing that you can definitely rest assured for Sunday. My phone won't be on at all. You want to know why? Because two years ago, in the 13-second game, when the Bills scored with 13 seconds left, I got like 600 texts. I mean, I was getting texts from people that I never even, I haven't heard from in years, family, <laughs> friends, all these people start texting me. Congrats! What a win, you people! Oh, and I'm sitting there on the couch, and I'm just looking at them with my phone, and I'm I'm watching the game. I'm going, the game's not over. I mean, can we can we stop here? And then, sure enough, uh, we know what happened from there. So, there's no phones for me uh, on Sunday. Like, I don't. No I'm phones. not watching the game with anybody. It's just gonna be me. I mean, my family, my wife, and my kids will be here. But by that time, I'm gonna be locked in on the game, and I'm not turning the phone back on until the game's over because I don't want any of these text before the game is over uh congratulating yeah. me on games that aren't finished so uh we'll have none of that this year there's three none more nba games tonight uh that we have not discussed yet the suns are in new orleans against the pelicans tonight pelicans minus two and a half 236 and a half is the total looks like everyone available on both sides that matters yeah i bet on the uh, pelicans today i laid two and a half i'm scared to death <laughs> Uh, the Pacers, after the win in Sacramento Tomato last night, they go up the coast to Portland where they take on the Blazers. Pacers minus six and a half, 236 and a half to total. I actually got a lot to tell you about here. It looks like the Pacers, Scotty, are going to get Siakam in the lineup for the first time. He is expected to play. Uh, Halliburton's questionable, Toppin questionable. Mather, I mean, Mather played last night. He's questionable tonight. Uh, we'll see how all that goes. Simons is sick, and he's questionable for Portland, uh, and DeAndre Ayton, I guess, got the ice out of his driveway. Uh, he's probable tonight uh, for the Trailblazers. They're awful, and the Pacers should go in there and handle their business. I don't care that they played last night either. I think uh, Portland this year is a disaster. Uh, and finally, the Nets uh, are out west uh, still. They are in Los Angeles tonight against the Lakers. Lakers minus six and a half. 225 and a half is the total. So I think this is a sucker bet. I think the Nets will cover the number because I think this is going to be a wild game. I like the over. I think the Lakers will F around with the Nets because they got a bunch of guys that can put the ball in a hole. This is going to be a scoring festival between D'Lo, LeBron, AD, and everyone else. And then you know what happens. Dinwiddie. Uh, Johnson, Bridges, uh, Claxton. It goes on and on with guys, Thomas, that can put the ball in the hole. Love the over, and I'll take the six and a half. I think the Lakers beat them by like three or four. Uh, there you go. That is your night in the NBA. Uh, how about a little college rack for you, Scotty? Uh, last night first, South Florida upset uh, Memphis 74-73 on the road to the pyramid. They were down 15 at the half, and they won that game against memphis uh so that was a bad job by the tigers there at home i'd personally scotty like to thank fau uh because i picked them up at halftime when they were down 11 minus two and a half uh, and they ended up covering that for me on the live bet against wichita state down there in boca so good win there how about green bay and wright state scotty with that 88 81 what do we have there on that one again what'd you have on wright state last night i had uh green bay plus 10 oh, green bay plus the 10 and they won outright Outright yeah. win uh, with the plus of 10. How about that? Uh, Illinois beat Michigan 88-73. to 73. Tonight, here's what we have for you. Uh, Xavier, Big East play against Georgetown. Uh, they are at home. St. Louis, the Billikens at VCU tonight, 8-10. Indiana, dun, 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 in Wisconsin to take on the Badgers. And late night Mountain West, UNLV and Colorado State in Fort Collins. I got in on that UNLV seven and a half against Colorado State. Uh, Colorado State is unbelievable. They're in Fort Collins. It's automatic. Everybody and their brother's betting on them. That's why I'm on UNLV with the seven and a half. Indiana will get whacked at the coal. They will not cover. They got whacked at home by Purdue. We now know that they officially suck, and it's highly unfortunate for me. I like VCU at home. 
Xavier at home. I think Xavier can still handle that nut at 12 and a hook. Uh, it is a big number, no doubt, uh, but they should be able to handle it at home, as you say. Uh, there's a lot of big games this weekend as well, Scotty. Uh, obviously, we did not have the numbers for plenty of those uh, today, but uh, several pretty good ones. You got Baylor in Texas tomorrow, Creighton's at Seton Hall, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, Alabama, Tennessee, Iowa State, TCU, Kansas, West Virginia. Uh, a very big Saturday in college hoops. Uh, yeah, watch out like for that uh, Seton Hall team. I mean, there's six uh, and one. Okay. Mafia knows it in conference play. They Holloway's got them playing great ball. Why not take out Creighton tomorrow? If they do, they go to seven and one in conference, and I think they solidify an NCAA bid. Uh, I'm done betting against Seton Hall. Uh, I want no part of it. Uh, they burned me with UConn. They burned me with Providence. They burned me with Marquette already in like the last three weeks. So I ain't right. messing around uh, going after Seton Hall anymore. Hockey. Everybody loves hockey. Uh, everybody does love hockey. Uh, you did get – I was watching that Bruin Avalanche game last night. And it was 3-2. <laughs> uh, like midway through the third, it was a tight game, close game. And then the Bruins were able to get those couple goals laid. Boston to get the hat trick. They get you over the six and a half. So good catch there. The Senators beat the Habs last night. They crushed them. Six to two with the Habs off that back to back. Tampa and the Wild went over that number. Had that, Flyers beat the- had that minus yes. a goal and a half at plus one eighty. The Lightning at home over yes. the Wild. I won't be surprised the Panthers do that to them again tonight. No, I wouldn't be either. Uh, Sabers beat the Hawks three uh, nothing. Vegas beat the beat the Rangers five to one out of the T-Mobile. So a tough effort Fail. by the Rangers there. Oilers did cover the puck and a half against Seattle uh, as well. And uh, the Leaf. Uh, flame game did go over, Scotty, but unfortunately the Flames did not win because Austin Matthews had a hat trick. For Toronto. You know they had a they had a two nothing lead like five minutes into the game too. Uh, they jumped on Toronto very early, uh, and then they could not hold down Matthews, and away we go. Minnesota, as you mentioned, uh, they have a back to back in Florida. Got whacked in Tampa last night. Tonight they go to Sunrise against the Panthers, where the Panthers are minus one ninety. Flat six is the total in this one. I'm with you. I can see the Wild getting whacked again here tonight. Yeah, I'm on uh, Florida, and um, I laid the goal and a half, and I'm doing it again to them. We did it last night. We're going to do it again tonight. And I got more NHL games, I bet. Believe me, you. Uh, The Red Wings are in Carolina against the Hurricanes. Hurricanes minus 225. Yeah, and the Red Wings are plus a buck eighty, and they've been playing some pretty good hockey. Six and a half is the total. Yeah, I don't like them in Raleigh though, so I bet it over six and a half goals at even money. The Devils are a road favorite in Columbus tonight against the Blue Jackets, who really suck. Uh, Devils minus one fifty-five, plus a buck twenty-five for Columbus. Six and a half the total here too. Well, I think the Devils will win the game. I'd be willing to bet them either way: money line, puck line, laying the goal and a half. Uh, to handle their business in Columbus. Now, the Islanders have had all kinds of problems lately. Uh, they'll try to solve some of them in Chicago tonight. Blackhawks now playing a back-to-back because they got snowed in in Buffalo. Islanders minus 250 on the road. Five and a half uh, the total's down to now. I know Sorokin's starting for the Islanders tonight. I want no part of these two teams, the way the Islanders are playing, or the Blackhawks without their star Bedard. But I did bet it. Islanders Blackhawks suck game under six at minus a buck 15 on bet MGM. I bet it this morning for the under. Uh, there you go. I, that's where I would go to. Uh, honestly, if I was playing this game, I'd be playing it even at five. It, you got it this morning at six. It's moved to five and a half. Now I'd still probably uh, play it under at five and a half. Uh, Cause I just don't see much happening there. One other uh, college rack game uh, today, oh, uh, Carver on. High, that I bet on. on Niagara and Ryder, the over 147. Niagara and Ryder, over a buck 47. Both of these teams score in the high 70s, low 80s every time they play. Uh, in any game they play, now they're playing each other. I'm just hoping for an over 147. Uh, we always love Friday Night Mac. Uh, Friday night in the Mac, uh, getting together with Ryder. And hold on, Niagara hold on. There it. might be more. Uh, another Hyde. add on. We got another oh, add is, on. Hold it's, on. It's very important. I got Maris Sorry. and Mount St. Mary's over to more 132 and a hook. I got Akron Zips on the money line to beat Kent and Quinnipiac over Sienna. Oh, Lay the Bobcats. points. Oh, 
It is Mac Friday on Coast to Coast. We love by the way, get the Mac involved. Yes. By the way, that Panther game laying the goal a half is plus a buck thirty if they can handle the Wild uh, by two goals tonight. So I hit the buck eighty, buck eighty. Now we're going for the buck thirty. Nice. Uh, that is always good to see. So some add-ons for us here uh, for the college hoops. Uh, you mentioned this already a couple times. Hater goes to the Astros. Five years, $95 million. Uh, a lot of money there for the closer, but Astros now have Hater wrapped up uh, for a few years down in Houston. The A's, uh, the people who run the Oakland A's, are touring ballparks in Salt Lake City and Sacramento. For the A's to play in until that stadium is built in in Vegas, Scotty, their lease is up in Oakland after this season. I believe the Vegas stadium is not going to be ready until 2028. So they're going to need somewhere to play uh, during those years that they leave. Uh, three the years. In Alameda. Yeah, they got to find somewhere to play for three years. And the people in Oakland, uh, you know, they, they claim they still want them, but I think they're lying through their teeth. They hate their guts for what they've done, that they're going to Vegas in 28, whether you like it or not. So why would you get in bed with them to keep playing at the Coliseum when no one goes to begin with? I agree. Uh, I would fight. Why not uh, spice it up a little bit? Because you know what you do then? You know, that's a big opportunity for a place like Salt Lake City. You know, if they get the A's for a couple of years and people actually go, that's a way to then say to baseball, look, we can get our – we want a franchise. We had people show up for this. It, it's almost like, a, you know, a, a training wheel effort uh, for yeah. the city to show that they can have a major league team. Uh, so I think that would be a big spot if San, uh, Salt Lake City can actually pull that off. Uh, Dana White confirms that Connor McGregor will be back in 2024. No date and opponent uh, confirmed. I know we they floated around that he's going to fight Chandler uh, in a couple months, right? But that's not been confirmed yet. Uh, for that fight. I can't believe he's still fighting to begin with, uh, McGregor. I, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. He's got all the money in the world. He's gotten his ass beat the last few times. He actually he never wins. Fight. And he never Just fights. Go off, into the, go off into the sunset and, and drink your whiskey and get arrested or whatever it is that he does now uh, all right. the time, right? Why, why do we got to go fight? Uh, Faber is going to start, Uriah Faber is going to start a combat sports program at Sacramento State University. How about that? Go sign <laughs> up for the combat State. sports Sports degree out there uh, for, for Sacramento. Tell State. him about Cabrera. This is even better. And so Angel Cabrera, who's been in the tin uh, down in South America somewhere for the last couple of years for beating up uh, his wife or his girlfriend. Well, he's out of jail now, Scotty. And of course, once you win the Masters once, you can play at the Masters forever. Uh, the Masters has said if he can get a visa to the United States, you know, open arms uh, for Angel Cabrera to come play in the Masters again uh, starting this year. So there you go. Uh, you can do pretty much anything. If you win that gold jacket, they'll let you keep coming. A uh, green jacket, they'll let you keep coming back. That's for sure. Introducing Sports Injury Central's new feature, The Injury Edge, your NFL matchup cheat sheet. See all the significant injury mismatches broken down by offense and defense to highlight where the advantages lie, all for only $2.99 a week. How can you even consider making a bet or setting your fantasy lineup without knowing the injury mismatches? Go to SixScore.com today and get this week's Injury Edge. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York team has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. Your team name sucks. Your uniform sucks. Get in there. Be better. Suck. <laughs> Buffalo Bandit. Sports Rage Late Night only on Sports Grid. 
my goodness, if the Bucks come out strong and certainly make a point to say, look, even though we have been playing yeah. our best basketball, we're here to beat you down. And that's a big time win for the Milwaukee Bucks. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the Buck. This is one of the hardest jobs in all of football. You are replacing Bear Bryant. You are replacing Nick Saban. You are replacing guys who won national championships and they still wanted them out. They still Mike, wanted them gone. Mike Shula, is it you replacing Shula was him? a disaster. Dubos was a disaster. Gene Stallings. That's what I mean. They, they ran him out. He won a national championship and they ran Gene Stallings out. The Bostonian versus the Buck. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to game time decision that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. time they're going to decide the 26 world cup final venue on the 4th of february and it's down to jerry's world in dallas or snoopy in east rutherford will they play it indoors or will they play it outdoors they're the two finalists 82 year old jerry glanville hired by division two northwestern oklahoma state as defensive coordinator jesus world champion pole vaulter sean barber dead at 29 Snoop Dogg says he was told he could make $100 million on OnlyFans. He said, quote, all I got to do is show this thing, end quote. <laughs> Your boy Snoop, woman pushing a baby stroller in Southern Cali, whacked over the head with a metal rod in a disturbing video. <laughs> that is just awful. Former Kansas City ballet dancer dies in Minneapolis after being stabbed with with a golf club, <laughs> a 56 degree way. These are horrific stories and they are not funny. Man kidnapped a pregnant woman, locked her in his garage for five years. <laughs> oh my God. Police say an Indian CEO was arrested after his son's body was found in his luggage, cut to pieces. Pennsylvania toddler allegedly killed by dad's girlfriend who fed her acetone batteries and screws for dinner here have some nuts and bolts for dinner mark zuckerberg facing backlash over raising cows on beer and macadamia nuts in hawaii what's wrong with that i mean honestly 25 year old canadian man had his license 20 minutes gets pulled over for having a celebratory brew in the car while driving customer upset with his order at subway charged with battery after striking a worker with a sandwich, you can get charged with battery for pelting someone with a with a foot long carver high. Drunk passenger flying for first time asked flight attendants to join him in the mile high club. Getting involved. CTD is next. Go to ForellonEvents.com for all the action. I'll see you tomorrow at four with Joe Ranieri on In Game Live All Action.